it's Karen from Liongate Farm and last week we made Santas and I'm going to teach you how to take this Santa with a super long beard and turn it into a little gnome using more readily available um, locks because I know these locks are hard for some of you to find. So let me teach you how to make a gnome. Um, this is a smaller one. He'll probably be this size and let's get going. Okay, so today I'm going to teach you how to make a gnome similar to this guy. I don't have any already done ones, um, but in the Santa form. And we're going to use, we're not going to use Mosham locks. Um, I heard from a bunch of you that those are hard to get a hold of. We're going to use some Blue Face Lester locks. These are from My Sheep. These are readily available. I have them on the website. Um, these actually came from my sheep named Storm. She's like silver color. I really like using, see look, piece of my farm. I like using these because they're about six to eight inches long. Then you're gonna need some core wool, some, what, you only need a tiny bit of this. I don't know why I brought out a big giant piece. And then a hat color. And then I'm gonna, not a pine cone, I'm gonna put a pumpkin at the end of his hat. And then I'm going to decorate his hat with some burlap ribbon. This stuff's kind of fun. If you just Google burlap ribbon, you'll be able to find that. And then I've got a little flower here. Some embroidery floss to go around the pumpkin. You might need some scissors. You might need some glue. I'm just giving you an idea of what you need here. You might need some wire cutters for that stuff. You might need that. So I've got a little bit of everything we would need. The base, just like last week, you're going to use a piece of wool felt. And remember, this is about three by three. Just cut out a little, a little round, half round piece here. And then we're going to build up his head, just like we did before, with a little bit of core wool, because I don't like them super flat. I like them to have a little bit of depth for an ornament. I told you last week my Santa is my most popular ornament. This gnome comes in a quick second, let me tell you. That's why I don't have any right now. Again, it's time to be getting ready for the holiday bazaars. I know it seems crazy to talk about it in June, but it takes a little while to get enough product made. So we have a little face. I mean, this one is so much easier than the Santa even. Uh, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna coat this with the flesh color, build it up a little bit. Now, here's where I didn't use this last time, but I'm gonna use, I'll demonstrate it for you this time. This is that multi needle tool, it makes your flat felting go pretty fast. And I don't use it very often, I just old school it. I like my pen tool. My hand likes my pen tool. And then we're going to make a nose. So we have this kind of felted. I mean a little bit. We're going to make his nose. So I have a piece that's about I like big nose gnomes. So I'm going to I'm just going to roll this up with my fingers. You can use your skewer if you want. Take your single needle, find the center. Let's just tack it on with that fringe on the end. I don't felt a lot in his nose, just around his nose. Now, just like the Santa, only even more so, we're gonna put on his beard before we do his hat. So find your little locks and start attaching them. Start down, these are shorter locks than the Mosham, so start way down at the bottom. We're gonna have to layer them or shingle these locks on. Cut end will felt better and then this, this other end always looks better. 
So if they're a little felted at the top, that's okay. Use that to attach them. I think I'm going to save this dark one for his mustache. So as you're picking through your locks, look for mustachey, mustachey ones. When you're using smaller locks, it takes a little bit longer to make a beard. So layer one is on. Now we're going for layer two. If you're doing this, this is called shingling, kind of. So I'm starting up here with the second one. I'm up about a half an inch from the first row. Kind of just like we did with Santa. That's where his mouth would be. So I'm just going to keep going. Probably end up with three rows. I'm just putting these dark gray ones aside because I want to use them for a mustache. Now this guy, it's really long, but we'll just tack it on here. You can also fold them over if you think they're going to be too long. This looks short, but it's really not. What will happen as we keep building up little rows is it's going to get floofy. Again, try and felt always, always the cut end. So see how you have this curly end and this, this is the, the end that was up against the sheep's body when it got sheared. So now, because I've got this all the way up to his mouth, right there, on this side, I'm going to keep going up. Only I'm going to make it a little thinner, because gnomes, you know, they have, they have no eyes. You don't get to see their eyes. But we need to cover up his face. That's another nice gray one. Just kind of go around his nose. So sometimes I'll work in a row, sometimes I'll work top to bottom, whatever feels right. See how nice and fluffy these get? If you go out and look at my sheep right now, I just washed some that are going to go to a sheep show this week. And 
my black one, which is this color. You look like her fleece super short, but it's actually really long because it's so curled up. Trying to find the ends. Just like we did on the Santa, I'm only attaching the top end to start with. The hat's going to come down and cover most of this. I'm not going to put his mustache on quite yet. All right, so this guy's kind of hairy. You can see I'm kind of attached to the pad. Doesn't look like anything but a cousin it right now. All right, so we have the back to do. So I want you to do the same thing on the back, and you're just going to shingle them up one layer at a time till the back is covered. It'll probably take me, you know, another 10 minutes here. Just like the front. Okay, so I have been adding locks on the back of him like this. And now he's got quite a bit of hair going on here, up the sides. So as you can see, he's getting floofier. So what we're going to do next, we're going to take a, a little tiny bit of red. You know, you don't need much. Most of it's going to disappear anyways. And then that line... Let's just fill in his little little mouth. And then, remember I told you to keep holding back little locks for a mustache. So I'm using these gray ones, and I'm just going to poke them in here. There's another good one. These guys are way hairier than the Santas. This is another good one. I like making his mustache just a little bit different color than his hair because then it really stands out. So we got him all mustache on there. So right now what we have is a very hairy dude with a nose. So now we're going to work on his hat. I'm going to put these aside. I might need to add another one to this side. Wait a second. Changing my mind. just barely see his mouth okay so now we're gonna take I'm using this color is called fruit salad it's a Corydale blend it's on the website and we're gonna make him a hat I don't want you to worry about the hat brim at this point I just want you to go with this just tack it a little bit here I want you to go around Just like we built his hat, the Santa hat last week. 
but we're going to add a brim to this, which is a little bit different technique. So. Use your multi-tool. You can make these hats as big as you want, floppy over. The hat takes the longest of everything on this. So I'm gonna peel this off a little bit, move it down. I want his hat to start curving. So I kind of just build the hat the shape I want it. I'm not making it tall because I'm going to add something to this end here. I'm going to add a little pumpkin. But I do want it beefy. I don't want it thin. Because if it's an ornament, it needs to stand up. Basically getting it tacked together, I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to add to the back. We're going to add a brim again, so I'm not super worried about this, the ends of the hair not being tacked in. wanted you could build this off the gnome and then just tack it on but I like to build it on him that way I make sure I get the right size Remember last week how I wrapped. I'm just going to wrap this around. That helps make this tip round instead of flat. So I'm going to felt on this until it's all felted solid. And then we'll come back and build a brim here. Okay, I've been poking on this for about 10 minutes. I got his hat nice and solid, working on the sides. And this is, you can see that this is rounding up right here. You got to work both, and if you, you got to work both sides. Get it all nice and smooth. Back's going to be a little flatter than the front, but that's okay because it's an ornament, but you still want it to look good. All right, so the next thing we're going to do, his mustache is getting away from me. Next thing we're going to do is build the brim for his hat. So what you need to do is take your color and figure out how big the brim is going to be first. Because I like the brim to be loose on his head. So we're gonna need it to be that big, so make it a little bit bigger. I'd give you inches, but it's gonna be relative to the size of your gnome. We're gonna tear that roving off. I'm gonna put two pieces in a row. Let's get this all nice and flat. They can overlap. They will become one here in a minute. And then we're going to take what I have a little bit left here. So it's taking me about a half an ounce, two quarter ounce balls, to build this whole gnome hat. So it's a goodly amount. But that amount will help you if you're using other wool. 
The reason I'm laying this this way is because whenever the fibers are across and this way, they'll felt faster. It's okay if I don't have any there. So now I am going to felt this for a minute. Let's use, let's use multi here. Mostly in the middle. I want to... Not up here around the edges because we, we're going to need that to attach it. You're going to want to flip it, peel it off your felting surface. And see, because I laid these two out, the fibers all kind of go the right, you know, go the same way. And they're going to stay that, but we crossed with the other stuff, so that's going to help us build an edge. So, one more time. Probably really do want to use this tool to make this go faster. Try not to do the edges. We're going to need them. much easier to attach loose fibers to solid fibers than solid fibers to solid fibers. Flip it over again. You can see it's starting to become one. So what we're going to do now is we are going to find the side you like the most. I like that side. I like this side because all the fibers go one way. We're going to fold it in half. And we're going to felt along the fold. Don't be in a hurry to put this on until this is nice and felted. This is kind of like how you make the eyebrows or the eyelids, only on a giant scale. Just felting on the fold. Because I want that to be nice and smooth. And that's pretty good. You can always do a little bit of felting along here. But we're gonna, so it's pretty good. We're, we're at fabric level. We're going to find the center. Kind of wrap it around. Yeah, I got a little bit too much. But that's okay. It can be fat. Okay. I'm, I like to tack from the back to begin with. Actually, let me take that back. Leave it a little bit loose. And you'll understand that in just a minute. So tack down here. Gently, because we want that to be loose. Don't stab your finger. And then tack it really good up here. So now that it's loose, you're like, what am I gonna do? So kind of scrunch it in. Take 
takes a little bit of patience because we want this loose under here. Comes down about halfway over his nose. You can see I'm working it in to the hat by working my way up. You're just going to keep felting this until it's nice and smooth. It comes down on an angle over his head. You don't want it to be square looking. We have the same issue back here. We're going to work all this extra fiber into his hat. And remember, felting is about pushing that wool. So I'm pushing it, pushing it into the shape that I want it. As you become proficient, you learn which way to hold your needle. Get it to go the way you want it. So you can see what we have here is it looks like he really is wearing a hat. Nobody will know we attached it to his head. I'm going to use my little pin tool. Sometimes having two needles working at the same time gives you a smoother finish. I'm holding it at an angle, felting it towards the hat. Sometimes you get these little lines that you just want to get rid of. Just tease those fibers apart and poke them in. So now we have this little hat. This still needs a little bit more work to get it all nice and smooth. A lot of this will be covered up with his little burlap ribbon. So we have this little loopy guy. I'm going to work his beard a little bit to get it down round. Cannot see his mouth anymore. Tack his mustache up. So we can see his little mouth, but not really. <laughs> so the next thing I'm going to make before I decorate his hat is I'm going to make a little pumpkin. A tiny little pumpkin to go on the end of his hat. Tiny, tiny. So I'm taking a little piece of this orange. 
and I am going to make a little ball. You know, you could cheat and use a little felt ball, a little orange felt ball if you wanted. this little ball and it's kind of squishy on purpose. I'm going to take, have this little bit of embroidery floss here. The fast way to make a pumpkin look like a pumpkin. Now I'm going to tack it in with some extra fiber right there. And now I'm going to go around, pull it tight. Should have left an end. Let's just tack it in. And I'm going to go around. Believe me, this will look like a pumpkin when I'm done. It doesn't look like much right now, but it will. Okay. It's amazing you can felt embroidery floss. But I'm using a little bit of wool glue. off and then go back it can look like a pumpkin So we have this tiny little pumpkin, or semblance of a pumpkin. It's not perfect. I'm going to tack his little hat on here, which acts as the stem of the pumpkin. You want to make sure you tack it all the way around or it'll come off. So his hat will have a little pumpkin. There we go. He looks like fall. That's why I did this. Okay, then we have this little piece of burlap ribbon. I like to spread it out. I think if you just Google burlap ribbon, you'd be able to find it. It comes in lots of different colors. And then I like to take it around. Oh, I cut that just right. And I'm going to crisscross it. Again, I'm going to use a little teeny piece. You don't always have to use glue when it comes to felting. I'm just going to do that. Then, let's add a little piece of this fall stuff. Pitberry wreath. I think I got this at Hobby Lobby. I'm not affiliated with Hobby Lobby, but I do like to shop there. Nope, too far. 
Hold on, I need to find the center of this. I'm gonna twist this on. I'm just gonna twist that. It will just sit on there. Yeah, he might need a little bit of glue here and there. And then I had a little teeny orange flower. So I would put a little orange flower right there. And that's today's project. One little gnome. So built the same way as the Santa, but comes out totally different. Okay, a couple last finishing touches. I did go ahead and take a little dot of glue right here and some glue here and glued that on. Now I've got some just regular hardware twine and I am going to, because the devil's in the details, you guys. You always gotta put the details in. I'm gonna put a little bow here at the pumpkin because I always do little. So once you get it tied on there, make it tiny. Sometimes I use linen thread. Come on, buddy. And then just trim off your little edges. And then I'm gonna thread this giant eye needle. We're gonna put a hanger on him. And I like them to be out of twine. Twine does not like to go through a needle. I never cut it until I'm done. So let's see. Let's figure out where we're going to hang them. I'm going to go through here. If you're well felted, you don't have to worry about anything. And then I'm going to come back here. Take the needle out, make a knot. It should hide itself under the burlap. Knot it up a couple times. Cut that off. Okay, so I'm still attached over here. Whoops. Wait a minute. What did I do? Okay, so I'm still attached. I want it about right there. So pull it forward. Now you're going to tie all your little knots here. Cut that off. Pull it up. So now we have a little hanger there. Let's put his hat behind the hanger little finishing. All right, now let's form his beard. I like to use the little floofy hairs that stick out from there. To... Then I take, you know, my handy dandy, you know me, can't leave that nose without some blush on it. Let's just make it a little bit pink. Just adds a little bit to it, and then we have a little gnome ornament. You can straighten out his little hairs back here, just like we did on the front. There's one really long one. Just tuck them. If some of them are too long, just tuck them. Take your needle and tuck them back in. Again, if you make these for people, tell them to store them with a little bit of lavender so the moths don't eat them.